Getting ready to go live, and we are go now. Nope. Now. Okay, cool. Hey, hacksters. So yesterday, we had some technical difficulties, and that means that I tried to start the stream, and first my computer camera froze, and then the entire camera system um, went out. So today we're redoing it. Uh, we are looking at the Wemos Lowland 32 board. This is something that my friend Mohib brought in uh, to use with the Actobotics rover. Uh, this is a cool little board that was used by Mohib and Luis Montes at, at Synergy 2019. You can find Luis's code for this with the Actobotics rover on GitHub and a uh, bunch of other cool stuff about it. They did this workshop at Heatsink Labs in Arizona using Luis's um, utility called chirpers.com, which is different from chirp.io. This is a Node-RED-like uh, utility, which runs in your browser and can talk to your board over web Bluetooth. So your computer can talk to your microcontroller over Bluetooth assuming that you have Bluetooth uh, enabled, obviously. So this is the rover that you see on my desk, and then here is our complete pinout for the Wemos Lolin 32. There's more info about this. Here's Mohib's page real quick. <laughs> but there's a really cool tutorial about getting started with this on Hackster uh, by John Hart, which is linked in the description to this video. Besides looking at the pinout, you can check out some of the beginner sketches, like down here in the code. Here's a clock demo. There's showing some images that you can uh, display. One cool thing about when you're doing this in binary is that you can actually see what they're going to show. So like here, it's a big zero at the top uh, and then a dot because the zeros and ones look different. Uh, yeah, and then you have with a light detecting resistor, aka a photoresistor or like a light sensor, which is something that John used to demonstrate this uh, in terms of picking up a, an analog sin signal. And John links to this Programming Electronics Academy to do this. I haven't done this today. I've been getting my tech up and running, but uh, here is the example video. You can find it on YouTube. It's linked from the Hackster tutorial and you can see that the light sensor values are going up as the hand is moved away and more light reaches the sensor. So those are both linked from the tutorial. I thought it was also worth mentioning this one from Random Nerd Tutorials. So this one uh, talks about how you can get both the uh, Arduino IDE to talk to it, as well as, and this is using a couple of Adafruit libraries. There is the, um, pardon me, SSD 1306 library, which is this type of OLED display, which has, uh, it's a monochrome display, so black and white. And uh, there's another one as well, the Adafruit GFX library for graphical effects. Um, and in this case, you're using, uh, it's set up to use GPIO 22 and 21 as the default I squared C pins, that's for your data and clock lines. So you'll need to change that in the sketch. Down here, there's another cool thing talking about how to use MicroPython with it. Uh, and I think MicroPython is the future for most microcontrollers. It is super cool. Um, it enables you to store your code right on the board and run it without having to compile, which means that you can also usually just find your file, your code file on the board in a legible format, uh, open it up in a text editor, save it, and then it'll do its, um, its check to make sure that it can actually run on the board, and, it'll, uh, and then it'll go straight to it, rather than having to like, compile and upload every time, which I think is really cool. <laughs> um, so this is the OLED library for MicroPython. Pardon? And once again, you have to modify the default pins that are chosen for I squared C, in this case 21 and 22 again, um, but with uh, this one, again, you're going to use GPIO 4 and 5 for those pins, and they've got a couple demonstrations. Uh, one other useful thing that they linked from there was a place to buy this board. One of the cool things about it is that it is only like $9, depending on where you get it. So cool! 
Let's take a closer look real quick. I think that uh, one of my cameras is still being a little bit slow, but uh, you can see on the robot here that uh, we've got, once we plug it in, we will get a display. Well, first we'll get some motor activity, <laughs> but then we will get a display showing the MAC address of this particular board, which is really useful because it allows you to connect via Bluetooth. <laughs> I know what you're about. There we go. Um, up here. Now that's a little hard to read, uh, especially when I've got my fingers in front of it. <laughs> but it says 42E5, which is the MAC address of the board. Also, the focus isn't helping. Let's, let's just forget about this autofocus. That's not working for us. But anyway, um, <laughs> looking more closely at this board, we can see that it comes with a little uh, screen protector. Can we see that? There we go. So uh, according to a few sources, there are various different types of this board. And some of them come with buttons on the front like this. Some of them come on the back. And uh, other ones may have no buttons at all. You've also got a micro Python, <laughs> micro Python, micro USB connector, as well as a LiPo battery JST connector up here. And then all your connections for the screen are already soldered, which is pretty cool. Um, looks machine soldered, but yeah. Then you may or may not actually have female headers come with it, but in this case, um, someone has already soldered those on. I think that would have been Luis and or Mohib when they were assembling the kits. And we also have another row of um, breakouts over here that we're not actually using in the tutorial that I linked earlier uh, by Luis, and so they're not. Uh, they don't have headers on them, but you could easily apply those. And you can see over here, you've got some, uh, a variety of pins. One thing that I'm curious about, and that I would love to understand, is why there's two ground pins over here, 3.3 three, uh, 3 .3 volts and 5 volts, and two grounds. And then over here on the left, you've also got a 3 volt, Wait, is that just three volts? A three volt line, a five volt line, and another ground, but on the board it says SND. And I'm wondering, is that just a typo? Or is it like system ground or something that I'm not familiar with? Because if we pull up the diagram again. Oh yeah, the other cool thing about this is that it uses the ESP32 W room um, 32D chip for, uh, or module for Bluetooth, and it also provides uh, Wi-Fi. So you've got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on the same little module, and then this is just a really lovely little breakout for it. This red tab here, by the way, is just a screen protector that can come off very easily. So if we look at the pinout here, we will see that on the left there, it does, it is labeled ground, and also that other 3-volt pin is labeled 3v3. My guess for the 3v3 part is that there just wasn't enough space to label it with three characters there, but the SND makes no sense to me. I'm really curious about that, and I'm going to pull it back up to the camera here just so that everyone can have a look and maybe help me understand what the deal is, because that's really bugging me. Apologies for the... Uh, trouble focusing. We're really having a lot of lag in here, and <laughs> we've been trying to fix it. We will, we will get there. Um, but yeah. Fortunately, a lot of different places have the pinout. And yeah, again, you have a variety of places where you can buy this board. It comes with Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, an OLED display, and a couple of buttons. One of them is a reset button. It's labeled EN, but it is for resetting the board. And then you've got multiple ways to power it as well. It seems like a really cool little board. In this case, it's being used, of course, to power a robot, but there's all kinds of other stuff that you could do with it. And um, besides web Bluetooth in Chrome, which this tutorial covers, and I'll show them a, the video of Mohib and myself assembling this robot later on, um, but it's an hour long, so I gotta kinda, <laughs> I gotta edit a little bit. 
Mm, besides being able to run this on web Bluetooth via the Chrome browser, you can also run it, I believe, on Chrome on Android. However, unfortunately, iOS is not yet supported. So there are a couple of pros and cons to using this interface, but I think it's definitely got promise and it's really fascinating. I love this interface. And it seems like it would blend well with Let's Robot.TV, which is a telepresence interface that I'm uh, playing around with lately. So yeah, that is the Wemos Lolin32 uh, board with the ESP32WRoom32D module for wireless. And yeah, should be pretty interesting. I'm curious to see what people build with it. Have an awesome rest of your day, and as always, hack on.